Hey guys, you're watching Downski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create some deliciously textured 3D text all in Adobe Dimension. So without further ado, let's get started. Rightio, so first let's create a new document, select the canvas, and from the property inspector, change the width to 21 centimeters and the height to 29.7 centimeters, essentially A4 size. Next, we can navigate up to the scene panel, select the environment and pick the color picker. Switch over to image and click the open icon. And I've got some artwork here in Illustrator format that I'm gonna be using as a guide. And you can see I can open this back in Illustrator and then I can remove the background because we're gonna add our own background in Dimension. So it's just the tagline and the logo left. Let's save and close and jump back to Dimension. Now, something I can also do is switch back over to color pick a color for the background and then jump back over to image and then I get both of them. And if you go up and select the environment, you can use this checkbox here to enable or disable the background. Right, let's navigate over to our 3D models and click or drag to add some text. We can pan the camera using number two as the shortcut on the keyboard. And I'm gonna go over here and add some text. So I'm going to type the word dimension spread over three lines. And if I grab my main selection tool, I can then go and click on this icon to snap this to the ground plane. Now let's go back over to the property inspector and select a font. I'm gonna be using ITC Avant Garde Gothic Pro. And a little bit further down, we can customize some settings. So we have the size of our 3D text, we can adjust the depth, we can adjust the tracking, which is the space in between the letters, and we can adjust the leading, which is the space between the lines. And again, I've made some changes, so I'm just gonna snap that back to the ground plane and pop this in the center. We can also select the camera in our scene and adjust the field of view. So as you bring this slider up, you get more perspective and distortion. If you bring it all the way down, you get something a little bit more reminiscent of an orthographic camera and we can spin this around using the orbit tool, that's number one on the keyboard, and the dolly tool to zoom in or out, which is number three on the keyboard. You can also control the position and rotation from the property inspector, and if you get lost, you can select any object and press F to snap to that object in your scene. And now I'm going to use the orbit, pan, and dolly tools just to adjust the position of my text in relation to the composition. And I can select the canvas and go down here and turn off the grid if it does get at all distracting. Next, I'm going to go up here and add a camera bookmark and save these camera settings at this specific position. And because I've got my 3D text in the right position relative to my design, I can now turn off that background. And if you do spin the camera around by mistake, don't worry, you can go straight back up to that camera bookmark, click, and we're all good. Next, I'm going to select plane from the list of 3D models, and I can adjust the size of this from the property inspector. I'm gonna go for something like 2000 centimeters squared, so it covers the entire canvas. I'm also going to add a cube, drag this into position, and then adjust the sizing from the property inspector. And it's best practice to adjust your sizing from the property inspector for these customizable shapes, just so you don't get any distortion once you start applying materials. However, you can use the scale tool if you like. And you can see me adjusting the size of the cube here and you can press E on the keyboard, which is the shortcut for the move tool. So I'm just moving this around and adjusting that composition. And you can see my cheeky use of the scale tool here, S on the keyboard if you feel so inclined. And if ever in doubt, you can select an object, go over to the actions in the property inspector and just double check that it's snapped to the ground plane. Next, we're going to select the cube and press command or control D to duplicate. And we'll move this over here and bring this forward a little bit. And you can see me using those camera and tool shortcuts to quickly navigate around the workspace. And I'm just making some final adjustments to the cube here, bringing up the height just so it extends beyond the canvas. And you can click and drag on any of these values to adjust this in real time, as well as entering a value and pressing return. And we'll name these cubes cube right and cube left, just to stop me getting confused. Okay, let's start adding some materials. So from the materials tab, I'm gonna grab some walnut and drag this onto the text. And you can see the texture becomes applied and I'm just gonna reposition the camera here. And if we double click the text icon, we get properties relevant to this particular object. We can change the size of the texture by adjusting the repeat value. 
And we can also adjust the X and Y offset as well as the rotation. Essentially, this enables us to control the position and rotation of our texture. And many materials will come with maps for the roughness, metallic and normals. Essentially, this helps the texture to achieve a level of photorealism. And we can turn on real-time rendering to see this in action. However, as you'll see here, we can also select these textures and remove them entirely. And then we get access to that slider again. And I'm not entirely sure why I left my metallic at 100%, but that's the beauty of dimension. You can have metallic wood and you can make that wood translucent if you like. Ugh, fantastic. Anyway, let's come out of this object and we'll try a different material. So scrolling the list, I'm gonna grab some scratch copper and drag this onto the text layer or object. And you can see here, it looks less reflective and metallic because of the brightness of my environment. If you introduce darker colors and blacks and adjust the lighting, you can really bring out that metallic look that you'll see later in the tutorial. Now, some materials like copper allow you to adjust the base color. But remember, if it already has a color, you can remove that and add your own. And we get a lot of different parameters here. We can adjust the roughness, the scratches. We get splotches, dents, dent intensity. There's a whole host of different settings specific to this particular material. And as you'll see later in the tutorial, other materials do come with their own unique properties. And you can see I've introduced some scratches, dents, dirt, and generally unleashed destruction upon my text. And I can then go back and change the base color, or I can adjust the size and the position of this texture. Okay, so let's come back out of this text object. And for my final design, I'm going to be using gold. So let's drag this onto the text object or layer. And as I mentioned, you can see here that this material has a few different properties that we can change. Now I'm adjusting the roughness using the slider. If you bring the roughness all the way up, it's gonna be less reflective. Bring it all the way down, it's going to be more metallic. Now you can see me selecting the plane here and going inside this material. I'm going to introduce a color and you'll see how this changing color affects the text and everything else around it. Okay, so now we've changed the color of the plane the text is sitting on, we can now go back in and adjust the roughness. I'm gonna bring the patina up as well. This is just another property unique to this gold material. So if we come out of the text for a moment, we can scroll the property inspector all the way to the bottom and turn on bevel. This enables us to bevel the text in a variety of different ways and select from different bevel styles. You can see me adjusting the width and the angle here, and you can see how that changes in real time. And you can also repeat the bevel effect and then adjust the spacing between those repetitions. And then once you've got your bevel settings just right, you can hop through the different bevel styles and just see which one takes your fancy. And depending on the style you choose, you can really take this to the absolute extreme and a great technique with any 3D text is to apply a subtle round bevel. This just helps the text avoid looking too perfect and helps it feel more grounded like most objects in the real world. And you can see how awesome these bevel effects look when they're rendered with lighting and shadows. So if we now jump back into the material, something else we can do with 3D text is assign different materials to different parts of the text. And because I've reapplied gold specifically to the bevel, I can now adjust the roughness of just the bevel alone. So I'm gonna bring that all the way down to give it a really metallic look. And I'm gonna add brushed iridescent metal onto the side. Let's switch on rendering and you can see how this looks. And I'm now gonna go back into my bevel properties and switch out that multi-layered bevel for something a little bit simpler. And you can see me adjusting some of the settings here so we get that subtle bevel around the edge. And even though my bevel is going to be subtle, it's still going to shine with that metallic gold that you can see I applied to the edge. Okay, so now let's jump into the brushed iridescent metal on the side. You can see again, we can adjust the size and the offset and the rotation of this texture. And we can also select the base color and click on the pencil icon to open this in Photoshop. And I can go down here, add a hue and saturation adjustment layer, change the hue. 
save and close this and it will update these changes in Dimension. And if I want to, I can delete that adjustment layer, save, close, and then I'm back to where I was before. Okay, let's switch back to our main camera and we can see the design starting to come together. Now it just so happens that I quite like brushed iridescent metal. So I'm going to drag this material onto the object or layer, go into the properties for this material and adjust the repeat size. I'm also going to adjust the X and Y position of the material to get something that I like. And I'm going to grab another material for the other cube. So let's scroll down something like gold. Yes, everyone loves gold. We'll drag this onto our other cube. And if I go into the material properties, I'm going to bring the roughness up to 0.6, just so it's less reflective of other materials around it. And lastly, I'm going to drag some gold onto the plane and set the roughness to something quite low, somewhere around 0.2. So the material still has a reflective quality to it. And you can see we get a nice subtle reflection of the text as well. We can also adjust settings like intensity and rotation for our environment lights. And these settings for lighting as well as the properties for the different materials and the environment in this scene will determine how metallic the text looks. So let's jump over to the lighting tab and try out a few different environment lights. Something else we can also do is add in our own directional lights. So I can go and turn off my environment light and I'm left with my new directional light. And I can change the color of this light. So we can try a few different colors out and I can adjust the intensity, the rotation, the height and a few other properties for this. And again, I'm just adjusting all of the different sliders and seeing how these changes look in real time. And down the bottom, I can adjust the size and the edge softness of the directional light as well. Directional lights can also be deleted with the trash icon. And I'm going to switch back on my environment light and go with studio front key light for my final design. And with the environment lights, you can check colorize and you can apply a color tint to your light as well. So you can see I try a few different colors here and I settle on 8 FFF 66, which is a nice kind of dimension green. Now, if I go up to my environment, you can see that my background is turned off. I can turn it back on, but it's hidden behind a plane, but I'm gonna leave this selected so that it's included in the final render because I will be rendering a PSD from Dimension and I would like this included as a separate layer. I'm just doing a little bit of housekeeping here and grouping these objects into their own folder. We'll give this a name and then lock this so I don't move it by mistake. Now I want to make some final adjustments to my text. So I'm going to duplicate this with command or control D, turn off the first text layer and rename this top one text final. I'm then going to select convert to standard model. So the 3D text is now no longer editable in the same way. However, I can move each of these objects around independently. And I'm just going to take a moment just to name all of my layers so I don't get confused. So let's just zoom into our text, spin it around. Very nice, very nice. Now what I'm gonna do is zoom in and manually adjust the position of these letters just to get everything to line up and to make sure that the dimension text just stacks really nicely. And I'm just going to speed through this part of the process where I'm just moving the position of the letters and I'm actually being a bit cheeky and using the scale tool to skew the letters out of shape, but because it's on an angle and it's so subtle, it's almost impossible to notice. Now, once you've created your masterpiece, you can set up multiple cameras for different angles. So you can see here, I've positioned the camera high up. I'm going to select the camera and turn on focus. Now I can set the focus point to be anywhere in the scene by clicking. And you can see if I spin this around, it stays snapped to that position in the scene. Make sure you have focus preview turned on at the top and in dimensions preferences at the bottom. And we can then go and adjust the blur amount and we see those changes reflected when we turn on real time rendering. So let's crank this all the way up to 100 and you can see we get a slightly more dramatic blur effect. And I can go up here to my camera bookmarks and add this as a second camera. I'll give this the name focus blur. And then I can toggle between these two cameras 
whenever I like, and Dimension remembers all of the individual camera settings. Okay, so we're pretty much done. Let's switch over to render mode. And I can then select the cameras that I would like to include in the export. Each camera will be its own file. I can give this a name. I can select the quality. I'm going to go with high and I'm going to turn on PNG as well, just so I get both of those formats and then click render. And Adobe Dimension will do its thing and you end up with something that looks like this. And there we go. So there's a look at creating and texturing 3D text in Dimension. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.